Hallelujah. Three of them that I've been a part of. So it is just my pleasure and honor and joy to be back in front of you, to worship with you, and to be home. So if you could please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we put our trust in you. Your grace is all we need. Open our hearts to your word so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts may always be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. When I think of home, I think of a place where there's love overflowing. I wish I was home. I wish I was there with the things I've been knowing. That's home from Stephanie Mills' song, and I never get homesick until I think of coming home. So my wish has come true. I'm home. And let me just thank you for your prayers, your support, your listening ear, your love for the last four years on this journey. I invite you to turn your attention to today's sermon, entitled, In the Meantime, it's taken from the gospel according to Luke, our gospel today. For me, this gospel was daunting. It represents the longest speech by Jesus in Luke's gospel. And it's a challenge to proclaim. A fresh reverend, a freshly minted deacon, and I have to talk to you about wars and rumors of wars. But this morning, we're only going to focus on three things. Heed the warning, listen for God's voice, and endure. The first part of Jesus' story focuses on the warning. The story begins early in the chapter with Jesus walking and talking with the disciples in the temple. And this temple is beautiful. It's golden, it's full of stone, and when the sun shines on it, the disciples had to blind their eyes. It took over 50 years to build it. However, instead of listening to Jesus, instead of listening to his instruction, the disciples are walking around marveling at how beautiful everything is. Instead of listening to Jesus' story about the widow who gave her last copper pennies as an offering, the disciples are distracted. And in all likelihood, Jesus is disturbed, not only by their inattention, their failure to recognize the importance of God's presence in the temple, and to give him honor. His disciples only see the temple's outward beauty. Now, nor do they see the hypocrisy within the temple, the money changers, the merchants, all the business going on where there should be worship going. They do not seem to understand the importance of communion with God and his rules for living a righteous life. So Jesus turns to them and he says, the time will come when not one stone will be left standing. Not one stone left upon another. This that you're marveling at, it will all be a pile of rubble at your feet. Can you imagine how startled they were? And the disciples said, well, when is this going to happen? And are we going to get a sign? Jesus didn't answer their questions directly. Instead, he said, beware, or look out that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I'm he, I'm the Lord, the time is near. Do not go after them. Can you imagine? They are now on high alert. But he goes on to say a great deal will happen. First, you'll have wars and insurrections, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, famines, plagues, and there'll still be more ominous signs from heaven. I can feel the disciples go from high alert full-blown anxiety. I'm sure that Jesus had their total focus now. But 
Jesus is not done yet. Because he says, but before all of this happens, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. And finally, you will be betrayed either by parents, brothers, by relatives, and friends, and they will for this building that is soon to be broken. The sky is going to fall. So we have a summary of things that will happen. False prophets, political chaos, and natural disaster with a side order of high anxiety. But Jesus is loving and merciful. So he addresses their unspoken anxiety and fear. I was sure it was so heavy he could cut it with a knife. In answer to their anxiety, he says four things. Do not be terrified. The end will not follow immediately. Do not prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand. Not a hair of your head will perish, and you will gain your souls by your endurance. Trusting and believing, the disciples probably exhaled when they heard this. I know I did. After all, Jesus has just said, Fear not, it won't happen immediately. He's going to give us the answers to the test, so to speak. <laughs> And he guarantees that we'll pass. Not a hair would be harmed if we but endure. And just as I exhale, I wonder if the end is not coming immediately, then what do we do in the meantime? The Cambridge Dictionary offers this example for in the meantime. It means continue working until something we already expect happens. So in the meantime, while calamity may be all around us, and it looks like we are approaching the end times, if not living in them now, what do we do until the second time? Jesus answered to the disciples this way, don't be misled and be ready. That was the answer he gave the first century Jews. And it was appropriate for that time, for their history, for the culture, and what was going on. But what about us? What about us 21st century folks? I believe when Jesus describes things that will happen, he's not asking us to speculate about the future. And he certainly does not want us to be terrified. Instead, he is offering signs that call us to be faithful in the present. At the heart of the faithful <coughs> presence is our relationship with God. You will be given an opportunity to give testimony. Do not prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words of wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand. testimony. Oh, what could Jesus mean by that? He said that persecution is the opportunity to testify. It's our opportunity to give proof, in this case, that he is omnipotent. And just as God gave Moses, Jeremiah, and other prophets the capacity to confront their opponents, he will provide strength generation has had wars, ethnic cleansing, religious disputes, and political upheaval. But we can be confident that Jesus was in the midst of it, and he will be in the midst of it with us. 
whether you've been impacted firsthand or observed by others, we will have a testimony. The testimony is your story, your story to share about how you persevere because when you've been through something such as the death of a loved one, a shattered illness, loss of economic well-being, depression, or addictions, these hardships of life, they become your story, your testimony. And your witness is that you're still standing and that God saw you through it and brought you here today. Instead of wringing your hands and we can do something new. Because we've read the book. We have a story to share about. And we're prepared. We can unashamedly tell the world about Jesus and his love. A few weeks ago, I spoke to the Trinity congregation about the mustard seed, a seed of this day. We learned that faith the size of a mustard seed is grown on faith. Activities such as quiet conversations with someone when you have just a few minutes, completing a morning or evening prayer with your family, offering songs of praise, performing acts of kindness, loving the stranger, and studying the Bible, even if it's just a verse. These things take only a minute each day, but they bring you closer to God. They build to listen to Jesus in our lives. <coughs> we want to hear the words of comfort he has spoken in our gospel lesson today. To live in the meantime, do not be terrified. The end is not near. But I wonder if we will know God's voice or recognize his word when we hear it. That's the crux of the matter. God calls us to hear his voice know it, and to follow him. Jesus reminds us that his voice, his voice is the voice of God, our healer, our deliverer, our teacher. Do not be terrified. I am with you. Not a hair on your head will be harmed if you but endure. Endure to claim your soul. Endure until the end. That is the final promise that Jesus made to the disciples. It is the final promise that he makes to us. By endurance, we will gain our souls and life everlasting. I cannot stress this enough. Endurance is the key. Hanging in there when your world feels torn apart. Hanging in there when Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Trust in God to give you the strength to persevere in the heart, in the heat of the day. Jesus promises us, though the journey may be difficult, the outcome is assured if we but stay awake and be prepared. If we but stand. Stand in faith. We will not be shaken. Exercising the disciplines of faith that I talked about earlier will ensure that we will know God's voice when we hear it. That we will share His love with each lost soul. 